everybody. Welcome to Safest Family on the Block, where knowledge is power. Today, we're talking with Kevin Jarvis. Hey, Kevin. Hey, how's it going, Jason? Real good. How about your own self, man? Oh, not too bad, man. It's a good, yeah. good day so far. Yep. Can't complain. Happy no one listens, right? <laughs> That's right. Happy <laughs> yeah. fourth, by the way. Hope you have a good fourth. Oh, yeah. And to you. And to you. Should be a nice, mellow weekend, yep. hopefully. So Kevin comes to us from 12 plus years in cybersecurity professional activities in IT. He specializes in finding and stopping criminals from hacking into computers. And when Kevin's not busy looking for and finding the cyber bad guys, he enjoys spending time with his family and training in the martial arts, which is of course how he and I know each other. And Kevin, I, I'm having you on today because I think that this electronic self-defense realm is more important with each year. But unfortunately, it's a situation where the kids, our kids grew up with this technology, and to them it's a native language, where yeah. we're trying to keep up, basically having it working with a second language that we learned. Mm -hmm. And so we're already at a disadvantage. And so I'm hoping that you can bring some tools and some information to us so that we can get a slight advantage over our kids who are all smarter than us anyway, yeah. and move forward. So tell us a little bit about what are some of the best things that we should be aware of. Yeah, so I think um, number one thing is the the use of mobile devices, right? As mm -hmm. kids are growing up nowadays, they're um, they're interacting with devices that we didn't necessarily grow up with. Um, mm -hmm. you know, for like myself, I didn't have my a cell phone until I was an adult, right? Yeah. So, but these kids are growing up mm -hmm. now with easy access to all mm -hmm. of these um, devices, and there's a lot of dangers mm -hmm. as the kids are growing up in like social media from a much younger age, you know, than uh, what yeah. I grew up with. Yeah, I so. remember in the 90s and even the 2000s, one of the pieces of advice for cybersecurity that parents were given was keep the family computer in a public space. Yes, yeah. And that's just not, not relevant Feasible. to the reality yeah. of uh, mobile devices now. Yeah, and that was a lot easier back when, you know, it was <laughs> desktops too. Now you, even with yeah. laptops, you know, people are yeah. they just take it to the room right or yeah even, but mobile is really like changed has changed the, the landscape mm -hmm. a lot especially for parenting right the and what i wanted to make parents aware of is there um there are some kind of some newer tools right like mm -hmm. the these tech companies are have released some stuff to at least to help parents figure this out so um in the Apple ecosystem, right? So you have something known as screen time. And on the Google Android ecosystem, you have something known as a uh, family link, that's what it's called. And they both work relatively the same way, right? So where basically you create a child account and then you link it to you with your parent account, right? And then by doing that, it basically um, delegates authority from the child account to the parent account for you to make decisions on their behalf and how they're using their device. So um, it takes it takes a little bit of you know some setup, right? A little bit of research and understanding how to, how to set it up. But once you set it up, it, it's it's really nice because like for for me, I'm a parent now, and you know I'm thinking about my kids engaging in like the the world of the internet. And based on what I do for my job, I'm very well aware of the dangers of the internet. And so the, what I've done is um, we're, we're an Apple household. So we use screen time for, I have screen time set up on everything. So, um, you know, that's, that's the first thing I'll tell parents to take a look at is leveraging screen time and leveraging family link is the Android equivalent, but right. they both work relatively the same way. Okay. And these, uh, these devices not only help you monitor for potential predators, maybe keep an eye on their location, have some access to yeah. the communication with friends and peers, but also even with the youngest kids can be used as something as simple as if the household rule is an hour of screen time in the morning, okay. it'll tell you when that hour is up. So it can really kind of cover the whole gamut of parental concerns, yeah. at least at a basic level. Yeah. So like, um, you know, there are just in general with the use mm -hmm. of mobile devices, you know, parents should be aware of any kind of app that allows mm -hmm. you do disappearing messages um, mm. that tend to be the kind of apps that child predators like to use mm. um, and that, it's been pretty that's been a known thing out at least in my portion of the industry 
or like you know mm -hmm. bad guys like to use snapchat because they think as soon as they send a message then it's going to disappear right or same thing with mm -hmm. other apps where you um you can set up automatic deletion of videos so unfortunately while that helps with from a privacy perspective that also arms the bad mm -hmm. guys with you know unfortunately going after mm -hmm. children so they, the evidence is also deleting itself mm -hmm. So what you can do is to understand like your, your child's, um, you know, you can set guardrails like what you're talking about. So like, mm -hmm. let's say I have screen time. So today what I do with my kids is I say, hey, you know, our household limit is one hour a day. Mm -hmm. And I can use screen time to enforce that on their device. So it kicks them off. And then I have some exceptions where it's like, you know what, if you know, not all screen time is equal, you know, I mm -hmm. think we can all recognize that. So if they're doing something educational on, mm -hmm. on their device, then, you know, I don't care if they want to do this, you know, there's like reading and math apps, especially in this COVID life, they have yeah. a bunch of new apps mm -hmm. that they got exposed to uh, as part of their remote learning. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care if they, if they want to do that for four hours and learn math, you know, go right ahead. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so if they're on Khan Academy learning to code or they're playing chess with grandpa, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can set, you can actually differentiate between those things. And yep. so there's yep. a greater limit for those or no limit for those, but it's an hour of Halo, hell or high water. Right. Yeah. So okay. you know, my kids are really into like Roblox, right? So, mm, yeah. um, so, or Minecraft or whatever, those kinds of games. So you can set it by category. So you can say, Hey, mm. if the category of the app is education, then mm. let it be unlimited. But if the category of the app is gaming and it's only one hour, Right. And then, okay. and then if they hit that hour and then they've been really good, they can mm. send me a request from their device to be like, mm. Hey, please, dad, let me, um, you know, get another hour of screen mm. time. And then, uh, you can go from there. So these are really robust and flexible. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, Excellent. they're really, you can do a lot of different things. You can, um, it's not also, it's not just apps. It's also mm. websites. You can say, Hey, mm. you're only allowed to, um, go to these websites or if you want to go to these mm -hmm. other websites then you know you have to ask permission or you know or you can only limit adult content you know there's different like levels of filters mm -hmm. that you can do uh, right. so the the other thing that's just by setting it even if you don't put guardrails like hard limit mm -hmm. um you know there's just the purchases right like i have friends where they handed their device to their kid and then because they didn't have any of these guardrails set up, their kid ran up the bill and like bought a whole bunch of stuff within an app mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they now have a hundred dollars worth of some random digital currency in a, in a game. But yeah, uh, I remember there was, there was a news article maybe four years ago about some toddler mm -hmm. who just didn't understand the concept that they were spending money, rang up a five figure app store bill yep. one yep. month. Yeah, and then it's kind of, it's kind of mixed whether or not you get that money back from Apple, yeah. or Google, right? I've uh, I've heard both, you know, where sometimes yeah. you get back, sometimes they don't. And so the, you know, you can just say, hey, by setting up this account or yeah, mm -hmm. by giving the child account and then setting this up, they send you a request for purchase, and then you can mm -hmm. say, yes, I approve you buying this, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And then that way you're much more in control, at least with your, yeah. your credit card on, on these devices. Yeah. It also feels like it sets up a, a record of it. So that when you talk to your kid about budgeting and allowance and stuff, you can present them a bill even yep. each month. That's actually, yeah. that's actually what I do with my kids. I, um, <laughs> you know, with their allowance money, right? They'll be like, dad, I really want to buy this. And I'll be like, well, do you have five? You're going to give me five bucks and they'll give me five bucks cash and then I'll approve it. And then it charges my credit card, but then I pay it later. Excellent. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about is um, there's there's something known as jailbreaking or rooting, mm. you know, devices. Um, a lot of people do that for fun, and you know that there's I think there's a time and place for it, but unless you're really technical and you're really wanting to get into like the guts of the devices, like it's just not something mm. you should be doing, right? Like mm. the that compromises the security of the device in a lot of different ways. You stop getting at, um, updates from the providers, uh, yeah. so on and so forth, right? And there's no, if you're a parent and you're letting your kid mess with your phone, and if you wanna use that same phone for work, 
right? Mm -hmm. Every company I know of will not let you put a jailbroken or rooted device on, mm -hmm. you know, on the work network, right? So you might get yourself in trouble if your kid is mess messing with your device. Well, it's not unlike, you know, working on a car, right? I mean, yeah. some kids want to work on a car and that's great, but they're not going to work on the car that you're using to get to work every day. You're going to buy them a junker that they can play with on the side. Yep. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that's, and it's just the, I mean, the point of doing it is so that you can mess with the guts of the device, right? Because you're breaking out of whatever Apple yeah. and Google has set up for, you know, the, the controls of, of the operating system. Mm -hmm. But um, the, and then, like I said, there's a time and place for it. If you're like really mm -hmm. technical and you really want to understand the guts of how Android and iOS work, you know, that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. the place for it. Besides that, but I know a lot of people that do it just for fun. And I'm like, eh. Yeah. Well, you if you want to be curious and yeah. explore on like the phone that you just replaced, yeah, but yeah. not your phone because you need that for your own work and life. And I'm getting the sense that not for your kid's personal phone because that could open them up to some exploits and vulnerabilities, both yeah. financially and maybe to their safety. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the you know the the thing about the jailbroken aspect is um, that's how some people install spyware on mobile devices, right? They'll you know, once it's already been jailbroken, then those controls don't exist. And then you can install spyware on that device. And then now you can be tracked unknowingly, right? Uh, so it's just one, just don't do it, right? Mm. Unless you're trying to learn something new on the side, just don't do it. Mm. And then um, and kind of on that same line is um, th what's known as third party app stores. Mm. Uh, um, so in, especially when it comes to like the Android ecosystem, there's the Google Play Store where you can just like in, on your phone, you can be like, hey, tell me what the latest app or search for an app, right? And it's all the official Google Play stuff. There's a whole lot of security that goes into how apps get put into those third party app stores that don't exist in these third party app stores. So you can, um, you know, you just you can just Google, you know, find stuff on the internet that says download this and you'll be this fancy app that you can install on your Android device. Just don't do it. It's like there's so much malware out there, right? And it circumvents every single control. It's just one of those things where, unless you really know what you're doing and you really understand like how to tear apart like uh, the APK files that you're downloading to put on your Android device, just don't do it. Just stick to the official Play Store. So when you get outside of those official stores, you've got both people who aren't competent mm -hmm. who build these things. They're Riddled with bugs and riddled with potential exploits. And you've also got straight up bad actors who are creating yep. advertising as security software, something built to compromise your security. Yep. yep. But both um, Apple and Google and their official stores do a pretty good job of weeding those out. Yeah, yeah. So the Google, I mean, I guess there's lots of like antivirus scanning and stuff that they do yeah. as apps are uploaded to the Play Store um, that don't exist when you just find it out on the internet on these third party sites. And okay. there's so much malware, like there's a lot of study. You can just Google, if you Google like um, Android malware mm -hmm. and you know recent studies, you'll find reports that talk, all talk about malware found in, on Android. Almost always the root cause of those, that, that malware was from third party app stores and not from the Google. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. So keeping that in there. And so we talked about a lot about what we can do with the phones, about managing what gets put on there. Um, some don't don't jailbreak it. Uh, yep. There, your basic, what would you say, nanny software where you can monitor and yep. what you can do as parents, and that works really well as the kids are you know younger, getting up into late grade mm -hmm. school. But then we start getting into the situations where they're wanting some more independence, and we should trust them to have some of that independence. Yep. But at the same time, we feel the need to be vigilant, and there's a lot of information saying that we should be vigilant yep. about what they're doing online. What are some of the ways that parents can stay not in control, but stay aware, stay in a position to mentor and to interfere if an adult comes in without, you know, turning your kid's life into a George Orwell novel. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you can you still use the screen time and uh, family link and just don't have guardrails, but then that at least mm -hmm. allows you as a parent to understand Hey, my kid is spending, you know, a lot of time on this app. You know, I should probably better understand what are they doing. And then um, this, the nanny, like the screen time and family link stuff, doesn't tell you what they're doing. It just tells you, hey, they spent X number of hours using mm. Snapchat, right? 
So you're gonna be like, oh, okay, so I see my kids doing a lot of things in Snapchat, I should probably have a conversation with them. So I think as they're, as they're older, it's, it makes you aware of like, hey, what is this app that's called Discord, right? I should probably, you know, go look up what, what is Discord and understand, oh, okay, it's kind of like this you know, chat software, right? I'm like, okay, what, and then go have a conversation. So, you know, as they're older, right, let them, ex you know, explore the internet in, in a safe way. And you can still put some guardrails around like, hey, I don't care what you do as long as it's not adult content and then or and you can put those guardrails in place or the same thing with purchase you still have to purchase there but then just don't have like the screen time limits right where you can say mm -hmm. you only get an hour really like, unlimited screen time but at least i know what you're doing mm -hmm. um you know that's one way to go about it the another uh thing you can do is it's kind of a sneaky parent thing to do but if you manage to, you know, if you have an older child who, where you don't have this kind of setup, yeah. you can um, look at their battery usage. You know, if you just get their phone and you look at their battery usage, you'd be like, oh, apparently this app is using X percentage of their battery. That must mean that they're mm. using it a lot. Um, not always true. Yeah. Sometimes apps are just buggy and they're draining the battery behind yeah. the scenes. But you least... they're left in the background and still on for hours and hours or something yeah. like that. Okay. Well, at least makes you aware of what kind of apps, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think she says something that's really bears um, repeating about you have these ways to find out how your kid is spending some time online. And then your next thing is you spot something unusual, you spot an anomaly. And the next step is to have a conversation. Yeah. yeah. And with all of these risks about parenting, whether it's online behavior, mobile phones, uh, sex when they start getting old enough for that, um, mm -hmm. drugs, sports going out at night, driving, all of these potential threats. It starts with that trusting relationship yep. and those open lines of communication. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just down to education, right? So yeah. like said, it's, it's conversation, even, even if you think you're, maybe your child doesn't want to talk to you necessarily about something, mm. at least arming them with the education of like understanding, mm. Hey, that the, the nature of predators. Right. So yeah. it comes to like in the online world, you know, the, the nature, the nature of grooming, right. Mm. Uh, a potential victim right there. You know, they're trying to establish some kind of contact with them, usually through some kind of messaging application and then they'll lie about who they are. Right. And it's, mm. um, and in order to try and entice the, you know, the child to meet them somewhere, right, is mm. usually part of the end goal, right? And and explaining that to your, to your kid, explaining them, hey, you know, this is why you guard your privacy, right? And this is why mm. you don't just talk to anyone on the internet, right? Unless you really know who they are in real life. Um, and then, you know, as stuff comes up in the news, right, showing them news stories to, to prove that you're not lying, mm. right? That this is a real yeah. threat, you know? And that's where like you that's the education piece of it you know talking to your kids and making them aware of the threats in the world and it's you know i mean unfortunately it's not all you know rainbows and uh out there so yeah no that makes very good sense yeah uh you one thing that you mentioned there was those grooming behaviors and uh privacy behaviors there's some things that we can specifically look for and specifically avoid one, one thing that I know a very small amount about is something as simple as if I post a photo of my kid being adorable at a park, a bad actor knows exactly where that photo was taken unless I take steps to yep. make that not true because my phone knows where I am and it tells, using very layman's terms, of course, it tells the photo and yep. that's actually embedded in the, in the code. Yep. And so there are, a few, there are a lot of uh, little vulnerabilities that I think are not, not a lot of parents know about. Could you speak to some of those, the most important ones? Sure, yeah. So um, for that specific use um, example yeah. where you take a photo and, um, yeah, in the, the, the metadata of the photo, right, mm -hmm. your camera is putting the latitude, longitude, and timestamp, you know, behind the scenes of within the actual photo file itself. So when you... However, when you upload it to a social media mm -hmm. um, platform, a lot of social media platforms will scrub oh. that for that from the actual photo itself. Mm -hmm. However, they will, depending upon your settings for your account, if wherever your device is, where you said, "Hey, you know, um, I'm going to post this," uh, you know, on social media, let's say Twitter, right? Like, a lot of people don't realize that. Um, 
Twitter will actually record like your physical location as mm -hmm. you're tweeting, unless you've go, gone into your profile and said, don't post my location. Mm -hmm. So it becomes less about the actual photo. Well, yes, that does give details of what your child looks like and your relationship mm -hmm. with your child. And people need to understand anything you put on the internet is never deleted, right? Mm -hmm. And um, there's, I can talk about that in a second, but the, um, the, there's a lot of location tracking in the apps, right? Mm. So if you're on, you need to go into Twitter and you need to go into Facebook and Snapchat and just turn all of that off, right? Snapchat has that ghost, like the, the map, right? Where you can see mm. where, where all your friends are, um, you know, and some of that is enabled by default to track you. And so you need to go out of your way to turn that off, to double check, turn it off, right? Unless, cause, um, like I wouldn't turn that stuff on unless I'm doing something that I feel uh, is dangerous and I need people to know where I am. But mm -hmm. when I say dangerous, I mean like um, if I'm going to go cave jumping, right. Mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, exploring caves and stuff mm -hmm. and people need it. And I'm posting like, Hey, I'm about to go into this cave. And then having that up there potentially useful if I go missing and people need to report, you know, Hey, this is yeah. the last known location. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I, you know, the, I don't really see the use of it or the point of it other than it just from an op from an opsec perspective operational security perspective it uh you know just reveals where you are and what you're doing and there's lots of um if you look you can look it up online there's lots of examples where people didn't know that they were being um their location was being reported on twitter and then they turn around and get abused and then people say hey look i I don't like this thing that you said, and now I'm issuing death threats against you. And hey, look, mm -hmm. this is where you live because you didn't turn off location tracking, and I know where your apartment is, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And you can apply the same thing to children. Yeah. But if, if children are yeah. engaging in social media and they don't understand, they're revealing where they are, you know, and um, then yeah, predators can go figure out this is where their school is, this is where, hey, they're out on recess right now if they have their device with them or whatever. Wow. Are there other major ones like that where we're giving away a lot of operational information accidentally on our phones that we should be aware of? It's, re it's really the social media apps that are the, mm -hmm. the biggest issue there. Because um, a lot of people engage in it and they don't really understand the risks. And then they, uh, by default, you want to connect with people, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to talk to people, right? That's mm -hmm. the whole point of those app apps. Um, so I would, it's really the social media apps where that, that tends to be a risk, um, okay. compared to other apps where you're just doing generic messaging with each other. Okay. And you had said you wanted to discuss about how the internet is forever. Yeah. 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 So the thing about the internet is, um, even if you post things on say Facebook or, you know, if you turn around and you decide to delete it, Facebook still has a copy of that file. Mm -hmm. It may delete it eventually, but you need to understand that a digital version of that photo is still out there. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you lock down the privacy, if you post something on a more public forum like Twitter, then it's definitely everywhere. Right. And so mm -hmm. um, people like, let's take a, a general use case, there's um, something known as the Wayback Machine. Yeah. So the Wayback Machine, for those that don't know, is something that just crawls the internet constantly and takes snapshots of everything it finds. And you can, anyone can go to it and look at a snapshot of um, a website from back in time, right? And it's stored, it's gonna be stored in Wayback Machine forever, forever their retention is, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, I've actually used that in my day job, well, you know, where I'm like, hey, you know, this, um, these people posted this content here, but now it's different. What did it, what did it used to be, right? And then you can basically rewind the tape using that and be like, oh, it used to be this. Um, so same thing with posting your own content about your family on the internet. If you have a personal, like, family blog, right? And, and let's say you decided to post a bunch of pictures on there, and then you you think about it later and you're like, you know what, maybe that probably wasn't the smartest thing. And then you decide to take it back down. It's already out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So you need to do that check before, um, po before you post, because once you post, it's out there. Right. And people don't understand yeah. it. There's all sorts of services on the internet. Wayback machine is just one. There's mm -hmm. a ton of them out there that do basically the same thing. 
where they're just crawling the internet and grabbing content and saving it somewhere else. And then the people that actually know, um, they're more like power users of the internet. They know where to go to go fetch that. Right? And unfortunately, some of the bad actors that we need to be aware of and alert for are that savvy. They are some power users of the internet because that's their profession, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. And that, so and that does bring me. Those. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. Uh, that does bring me to, I think, one of the things that's on a lot of parents' minds. And we touched on a little about grooming children and teens about online predators. And what are some of the best yeah. ways that we can protect our kids from that? Yeah, so the, the um, I think when they're younger, just that hard guardrails that I talked about mm-hmm. is best. Um, but when they're when they're older, you know, it's it's come back to, to education, mm-hmm. right? So just mm-hmm. these kids are growing up in an internet connected world, right? And I think mm-hmm. like um, so I'm part of the millennial generation. I think the millennial generation is like the last generation in the United States mm-hmm. that remembers life before the internet, right? Mm-hmm. Being a, a constant thing. So the like my kids are never going to know what it, the inner life before the internet, you know what I mean? So they're, yeah. to them, it's just so intuitive and part of their understanding of the world to have internet connectivity that they're just instinctually trustful of people on the internet. And it's that mm-hmm. trust that gets abused. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's any kind of crime, right. That, that tends to be like, you know, there's an abuse of trust, right. Usually a, a at some stage so the um it's just educating your kids and making them aware of these threats and be like yeah you know in, in the 90s we used to say never meet anyone on the internet and don't get in any strangers cars but now we have this thing called uber where we literally <laughs> <laughs> ask a stranger from the internet to come pick me up and put them in their car right yeah <laughs> so you know the world is cheap <clears throat> And we got to mm-hmm. be changing some of these things that we're telling our kids, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there, when it comes to technical guardrails, mm-hmm. there really isn't a lot there out there in the world of like, because there's so many different chat, you know, things mm-hmm. that a person can get into without like really locking down your home internet access, which tends to be outside the technical literacy of most parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and even then, your kid can just go to your friend's, their friend's house and probably get access to things. So, um, which is not the case, by the way, with the screen time and family link that will work regardless of wherever you are. Um, so, but the, it's really comes down to education, man. Like, I don't, I don't know of a good technical guardrail for like preventing a 16 year old, right. Who really wants to talk <laughs> to strangers on the internet. Like, yeah, it, 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 there's not much you can do. Well, that does bring up one good question because, of course, for us to educate our kids, we need to educate ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some great resources that parents can use to find out what they need to to keep their kids safe in this particular topic? Yeah, so you know, surprisingly, if you just look up like parental mm-hmm. controls, just the term parental mm-hmm. controls uh, on any mm-hmm. of these things, you'll often find kind of like lots of literature from like if you want to do parental controls on Facebook right parental controls on Snapchat parental controls mm. on Apple parental controls on Android right if you just use that mm. keyword phrase you'll come across a lot of like oh, okay these are some of the things I can put in place and these are some of the things I can mm. do um, and then really Google is your best friend right you know the mm. the the problem is that the the app landscape changes so fast right like mm. there's some new app that comes out there's some new functionality it's the new fad right and it changes so fast mm. that it comes back to just being aware of what apps your child is using mm. and then looking up what those are to be like oh okay i don't know what um slack is right so i'm just going to go look up slack and be like understand what mm. this what does this do right and a lot of it's just is in the messaging realm. It's either web messaging or social media or gaming. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. the other thing and we can all carry on. I was gonna say the other thing to keep mm-hmm. in mind is um, there are other ways for predators to communicate mm-hmm. with children outside of social media. Mm-hmm. Like gaming is another um, one that I've seen, uh, unfortunately, where like you you 
want to lock down chat on gaming, right? Especially mm -hmm. for young children, right? There's no no real need for them to be able to chat with other players, you know, the mm -hmm. in the world of gaming. Um, because that's another avenue that predators will use, right? Is mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, the, the intent of being able to do mm -hmm. chat through gaming is for gamers to coordinate to go do a mm -hmm. thing in the game, right? Yeah. Another avenue that bad guys will um, communicate with children to try and convince them to reveal details about themselves that they shouldn't reveal. Um, yeah, there's a there's a stand-up comic I can't remember which one it was who had a joke about he doesn't do online gaming because there's never a time in his life where he's on purpose going to go hang out with seven middle schoolers and a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And it's funny, but it it reflects an unfortunate reality. Yeah, that is the reality, unfortunately. So, um, so like for my kids, right for you know, basically, I lock, any kind of app that has any kind of messaging or chat capability, mm -hmm. I just turn it off for them, right? Okay. Uh, um, and until they're older. I mean, I got younger kids. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but that's where, you know, just being aware, right, as, as a parent, I, you know, that's mm -hmm. the number one thing that I can recommend for, for parents is, yeah, I get that not everyone is an IT person and not everyone is technical, which is fine, but it, you know that we we live in an internet age we live in a, nowadays like um people just need to be more proactive in understanding at least the apps that your kids are using and the capabilities within those apps yeah i mean you think about all the different skills that parents pick up yeah um either accidentally because well they're the person on duty or because they want to be a better parent your kid gets into baseball even if you never played baseball before you learn how to throw yeah. a pitch Yep. This seems like the same kind of thing that as parents, part of our job is to educate ourselves and learn what yep. we can to keep our kids safe. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. And, and like you said, Google is your friend. Oh, yeah. Where, I... you know, Google, even Googling online grooming yeah. techniques where we have to keep up with the different apps and the different places, but the behavior and the goals is the same, whatever tools they're using. Yeah. And that's the thing we can do to educate our kids, educate ourselves. Yeah. So back to that, yeah. what I was talking about with um, mm -hmm. self-deleting messages, right? That's yeah. also ephemeral messages. Mm -hmm. um, I guarantee every single app that has that capability has pedophiles. I guarantee mm -hmm. it. Like, you know, it's, it's, I've seen it in multiple cases in my field of work. And um, the other thing too, is I think people underestimate mm -hmm. sometimes like the, they feel ashamed that they have to Google something. And mm. I just want to say someone, and as someone who works in IT, has worked in IT for over <laughs> a decade, I still Google things every single day, right? As part yeah. of my job, right? I mean, mm. it's a tool in the trade. Don't feel bad about having to Google and look something up, right? Mm. Um, it's just part of everyday life now, I think. Yeah. And one thing I've heard some people express concern about with Google um, also Facebook, but Google more specifically is these are big data companies. They do use your searches to try to sell you things, yep. but that breach of privacy doesn't trickle down to the predators, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're gonna, I mean, they're gonna sell it to Citibank, but they're not gonna sell it to this douchebag with a van. Uh, I mean, there's, there's <laughs> nothing is a hundred percent. There might, mm. if, if the That's bad right. guy is technical mm. savvy enough, there is potentially the possibility mm. that you know if they set up like a fake company and then mm. pretended to be an advertiser and then they wanted to purchase it from oh, crazy companies okay. right mm -hmm. um there is that possibility um but to be honest i can't think of a case off the top of my head where mm. that actually happened right but i mean when mm. it comes to the harvesting of your online details um from like facebook and amazon and google uh, to do targeted ads against you, mm -hmm. it's it tends to just be for that, right? Mm -hmm. the, the they want to give you ads that are make you more likely to click on them, because that's how they generate revenue. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then they'll sell your details mm -hmm. to other advertisers uh, for the same. They're monetizing mm -hmm. your personal data, right? Yeah. And that tends to be a different privacy concern mm -hmm. than when it comes to protecting children, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes to protecting children, though, I do recommend never creating an account that has their name on mm -hmm. it at the account name, right? Um, in any kind of online presence. I mean, it's a little bit hard to do that once mm -hmm. things like 
you know, Facebook and Twitter and, um, but you can do it and, you know, you can go, just go to Facebook, create a fake name, create a fake profile and use it as your real profile, but then your real name isn't tied to it. Um, same thing with your email address, right? So any kind of like online identity that you're creating, especially for your children, um, you know, never use real names as part of the name of that account. Um, you know, and there's some exceptions to that. Like if you are trying like, um, in the world of IT, there's, you want to kind of like, um, amplify your presence, right? So if you're, or any mm -hmm. other marketing where that's like your name is your brand, mm -hmm. you're trying to amplify your brand, you may do that, but that doesn't really apply to children, right? Yeah. Your 16 year old doesn't need to get that kind of brand recognition. Mm -hmm. And if he does, you've got a whole other set of problems. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, no, that makes sense. What are some other other really good pieces like that? Like, you know, don't don't put their name, don't put your address in your username, locking down chat, some of these very specific meat and potato yeah. things I think that uh, our viewers really are hungry for. What are some other ones that we should be aware of? Yeah, so like um, security questions is another one. Mm -hmm. um, never use real data with security mm -hmm. questions. Uh, just use fake data and mm -hmm that don't actually court. You can still use, you know, it doesn't have to make it a password, right? But unnecessarily, mm -hmm. but don't put the real answer for it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to say, what's my father's middle name, right? Or whatever, mm -hmm. don't actually put his middle name, just put something that you'll remember as the answer mm -hmm. to the question. Um, same thing with all of those security questions. And the reason for that is there's been a lot of breaches where mm -hmm. those are the kind of details that were compromised and leaked, right? And then and then as a bad guy, I can, you know, take that and then break into your account uh, in other places. Well, you see those, those silly little games on Facebook that ask, you know, what's your mother's maiden name? Where do you grow up? What's your yeah. favorite heavy metal band? Yeah, that's, um, that's, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so that's another thing, by the way, um, and thank you for bringing mm -hmm. it up. The, all of those like stupid apps and quizzes, I'm sorry, I shouldn't mm -hmm. say but they all of those little apps and quizzes on like facebook and stuff just don't do them man because what's, mm. what's happening behind the scenes is you're granting permission to those um essentially they're like virtual apps in the world of facebook mm. um you're giving away all of your personal details about your account to those apps right mm. and then you have no control over what the developer then does with your details um so that's another thing in Facebook, you can actually go into your profile and just turn all that off so that mm. uh, you, you'll still get the like the ads, but then it will break the ability for those apps to pull your details because what happens and people what people don't realize is you grant permission once mm. and then behind the scenes that app still has permissions in the future. Okay. So then they can continue to pull details about your account, uh, even though you're not using it anymore. It'd be very um surprised that like I've, I've like shown that to a few friends i'm like hey you go into this part of your profile and now look you here's these 200 apps because you got bored one day you know mm -hmm. they want to do a bunch of quizzes all these guys now know your your address your phone number your name your birthday and you just gave it all away to these people you can, now you have no control what they do with it wow so that's another thing that you turn off you should turn off right um Note to self, stop yeah. playing words with <laughs> friends. <laughs> it's just the linking to your Facebook. Yeah. All right. That's the issue. Right? And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's what I just recommend for people, you know, mm -hmm. use Facebook to connect with your friends and family where you know who they are and you talk to them. But there's like all of these services where they're trying to inject and integrate with the experience of Facebook. Just don't do it. Right. Just turn mm -hmm. all that off. You'll still get ads and all that kind of stuff, but just don't use like Facebook. I mean, another thing that people do is they'll use Facebook to authenticate to other mm. services. Mm. Um, I also don't really recommend that for, for folks. I know it's, you know, they're trying to give quality of life and uh, improvements where you just have to remember one account password mm. to log into these other services. I get it's difficult to remember different usernames and logins for all these different things, but I, I recommend that if you have, if you struggle with that, there's something known as password managers to help you manage that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Don't use Facebook to authenticate these other things mm -hmm. because it's a similar thing where um, 
these other services now have a link back to your Facebook account and sometimes they're pulling details out about you. Notes to self, stop using Facebook to log in. To <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's very valuable information and that's exactly the kind of thing we're, we're hoping to get. So that's two things I need to go change today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I can, uh, you yeah. know, doing show notes, I can give you like the exact place and, uh, in Facebook. Well, that'd be perfect. You know, that'd be perfect. Hey, this yeah. is where in your profile to go check this and turn it mm -hmm. on. Um, Outstanding. Um, are there any other real important glaring things like that rookie errors that we that parents are making and the people are making that we could, you know, that are just like that, where that was something that I didn't know about that I can go fix in 10 minutes yep. that will suddenly change my security prospects and the safety of my kids because that's where the bad guys are coming. Sure. Yeah. So there's, um, you know, the, it's not exactly really specifically to children, but it's kind of mm -hmm. similar to that Facebook thing where in mm -hmm. California, they passed like a law that says like, Hey, you have to give people, the ability to see what data has been recorded about them. And so now you can go to like Facebook mm. and you can go to Google and you can say, you can request, give me all the details that you know about mm. me. And um, you'll be very shocked what they know about you. And I think once, oh, wow. parents, once parents like mm. download that and they look at it and they're like, how do you know that I went to this website on this day and this time? Wow. You have this trailing timeline of my online activity for the last 10 years. Right. And then, um, You'll be very shocked, right, at the details that these companies know about you. Well, I'm never running for office. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what you can do now, as part yeah. of that same law, is you can request them to delete the data. Um, okay. But it, and that's yeah. it. Sounds very much like uh, how it's a good idea to go every year and get your credit report. Yeah. And check it to see what's going on, and maybe getting into the habit of doing that with your. It's not really a credit report, but it's kind of like your online credit or your social credit or whatever yeah. they called it in that one episode of Black Mirror. But you get you do oh, check yeah. in so once a year on that. Your social credit or yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, that's you know, it's at least do it now. Even if you don't make it a habit of every year, just go there and make yourself aware. And then that's the kind of stuff that educates you as a parent, and then you can turn around and educate your children to not yeah. be more aware of those kinds of things. I'm like, hey. All of these digital services are tracking you and what you're doing well, as it relates to predators right you know what really what they're trying to do is they're trying to make contact with children you know yeah. they're not necessarily going to go around and buy all this stuff but they um as part of their targeting practices they if you have all of these if your facebook profile is like public right that's a mm -hmm. definite no-no you should always lock down any kind of social media stuff that you have you should definitely lock that down from mm. privacy permissions perspective to just your friends and family, right? Mm. Don't never make anything public um, on any of these services. Um, and so um, that's like a number, number one thing for parents, you know, to mm. keep in mind, you know, I think all of them are a bit naive in the, like, I just want to show the world how cute my kid is and all that kind of stuff, right? And it's like, you know, I, as a parent, I totally get it. I recognize that, but I understand the danger of presenting that mm -hmm. to the world. If you have, like, a photo of, like, your kid's first day of school and it's in front of the school sign, right, and, and you post mm -hmm. that publicly, now a predator potentially knows what school your kid goes to. Mm -hmm. They know what they look like, right? Mm -hmm. Um, they can easily figure out, you know, your parents' name, you know, and then you can, yeah. they can approach the child and be like, hey, you know, so and your mom sent me here, right? your mom's name is this, yeah. right? And I uh, read a case study fairly recently where there, it was a, it was a long con on a teenager, not an abduction attempt, but they had used Facebook to be able to say, hey, I'm Chuck, your friend's, your mom's friend from, from work, yep. who, because they looked at the Facebook, she'd mentioned Chuck and there was a good chance the kid had heard of Chuck. Yep. Uh, your mom is in court right now and we need <laughs> da, 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 yeah. You know, and they're going to come seize your assets. So let's go to the family safe. Let's get the jewelry and the cash. I'm just going to hold on to it for. And that was, that was a real thing that apparently really happened to somebody and, and worked because they were able to get that information on the Facebook yep. and the other social media feeds. And that's, that's the... Good. Yeah. That's exactly why you lock down mm -hmm. from a permissions perspective because you know the the bad guys will use all of that to try and mm -hmm. like it's it comes down to an abuse of trust right you know another yeah. term for that is social engineering 
if people mm. want to look up that term, um, the which is basically you, you establish kind of a rapport, right, with your, mm. your target. You have established some kind of fake persona that you're in that you're talking to them about in this case, and that it was the bad guys pretending to be Chuck, right? You mm. the abuse the trust of the, the nativity of the child, right? Where the child is probably just freaking out that their parent is in jail, right? And they're not really thinking about, you know, the, hey, you know, if my parent was in jail, they probably would have called me or someone else would have told me by now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so there's lock it. I mean, there's a lot of these services have, you know, the ability to lock things down from a permissions perspective, mm -hmm. right? So people just need to log into their profiles, lock it down, right? I know you know, another perspective I've run across is people are like, I got nothing to hide, right? You know, I don't care if people look at my stuff, right? And it's like, mm. okay, that, I mean, I get what you're saying, but from a, just a protecting yourself and protecting your family, right? There's, mm. though, that, those data points get weaponized in ways that you can't imagine, right? Or mm. that you'll be very shocked by. Um, so just lock down your permissions, right? So some of the best advice I can give. Fantastic. So, you know, we're coming on to the end of the thing, but I wanted to ask two other real important questions. First of all, what's the really smart question I should have asked you already and I haven't yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, so, oh boy, uh, you're, you're already <laughs> asking pretty good questions. So the, um, so what are some of the stuff that you're doing with your kids, right? Are, are some of these, have you looked at some of the stuff for your kids? Right. Yeah, so I've got two kids. One's in his 20s. Yeah. And at that okay. point, it's just you trust you, yeah. <laughs> you trust you get smartened yeah. them up enough to be smarter than you were when you were 20. Yeah. And so far, he's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and the other one's 10. And so we've got uh, a fire, uh, what's that, a Barnes & Noble fire tablet, the one mm -hmm. that's also got the access. And so we've got... I don't remember the brand name off the top with the screen time monitoring. Mm -hmm. And fortunately right now in the lockdown, he's, he's right here. So I'm yeah. not uh, overly worried about that. Yeah. I do practice some, um, what's the word, some discipline about when I post photos of him, usually mm -hmm. have some kind of time, time lapse where if I take a photo of him doing something awesome and I want to share it, I don't post it until we're no longer in that location, yeah. for example. Yeah. Little yeah. things like that. And he's not quite old enough that I have to start worrying about him being on the chat. We finally uh, caved to some peer pressure and got him on that Facebook Messenger for Kids chat thing yeah. where yeah. he's on, where I'm aware of what's going on. And he's talking to his grandpa, he's talking to his cousins, he's talking to a couple of his age, age mate friends. Yep. And then beyond that, uh, as you say, we're locking down chat in the video games that he plays online yeah. for the exact reasons you talked about. Yeah. So what, what are some other points of vulnerability I should be aware of right there? So um, when it comes to like the Fire tablet, right? If you don't, yeah. I believe that's an Android operating system, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So I think so. Uh, you could be, you know, installing apps mm -hmm. that you're not aware mm -hmm. of and mm -hmm. you know, because you don't have that family link, you know, mm -hmm. sense, right? And so, yeah. Um, but I've also seen some kids do, right, is the... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the ability to create folders of apps, right? Like they'll, mm. they're trying to hide something from their parents. They'll create like, they'll like bury it so deep into like the mm. folder structure of the apps that like, as you're quickly looking through the screen, mm. you don't even know that the, the, the your kid hasn't installed, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. So just, you know, it's, there's some, ki kids will be sneaky, right? The, you know, any yeah. kind of like boundary you put, mm. they'll figure out a way to go around it. So, mm. um, it, same thing. That's why I recommend just using like a service like Family Time, right? Where it's a more sense. monitoring service yeah. device. Um, one of the challenges we're facing, and I think there's one easy solution, was that he received this as a gift for Christmas. But my wife and I both use iPhones. And mm -hmm. so I'm not as familiar with that operating system. Yeah. And so if he were to try to be sneaky, I think it would be very, very easy for him to do so. <laughs> because he knows that operating system. I just don't. Uh, where the solution yep. clearly is when it came time to get him a tablet to get him an iPad. Yeah. That's, that's the easy solution. Well, I, um, we are in this I, do actually think, I do actually mm. think you can manage um, Family mm. Link from an Apple device. So oh, I do good. think you can install okay. the Family Link app 
on Apple uh, to nice. do some management. But I don't believe the reverse is true, mm. where okay. I don't believe you can manage Apple screen time from, mm. from an Android device. Uh, that's, that's also, really, I forgot to talk about GPS, right? You, you, oh, yeah. You forgot to, um, when it comes to these devices, right? Mm. The, in the world of Apple, it's the, the Find My iPhone, right? Mm. Just, I encourage enabling that for all of your devices, especially if your kid is using it, um, as if it's a device that they carry with them. And it, that works, that's not tied to the screen time um, piece of it. It's just the normal, like, hey, if I lost my iPhone or my iPad, you know, I can log in with my Apple ID and figure out where it is. Um, that works the same way through the, when you have a child account linked to your parent mm -hmm. account in Apple, uh, you'll, as the parent, when you log in with your parent Apple ID, you'll see your child's um, devices. In the world of Android, you do need the family link um, app, to my knowledge, to do uh, the GPS tracking of your child. Um, so by having family link, you also get GPS tracking of, of the okay. um, Outstanding. Be aware of where your child is. Okay. Fantastic. And I feel like that's uh, exactly what most parents should do, just sit down and assess. Yeah. And not everybody's lucky enough to be able to call Kevin Jarvis on the phone and get his personal opinion, but yeah. there is Google. There are services out there. Uh, YouTube, like you say, is a wonderful yeah. resource for a lot of information. Yeah. And that's where people are finding this video, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's, um, that's about it, really. Uh, is there anything else that we missed that we can think of? Um, not, nothing sticking out at me in terms of mobile uh, devices. Uh, yeah. You know, there's plenty of privacy stuff that we can talk <laughs> yeah. about. Right? But, uh, <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah, it's uh, privacy. I'm at the point that privacy, oh, that's, a, that's a whole other rant for a whole other thing. But yeah, yeah. I think privacy is important the same way that I think horseshoes are important. Mm -hmm. It's a quaint notion for most of us that is no longer relevant <laughs> in most cases. And I think that our society in general is redefining what privacy is because there are some things that we value because we're pre-internet adults. Yep. that just are not reasonable uh, to you know, the things you would have to do to have that kind of privacy would constrict your life so much. And I feel like that's exactly what we're talking about. One of the challenges of parenting kids with mobile devices and the internet, how do we keep them safe without constraining their lives to a point that's not reasonable or feasible or practical or sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. And I really appreciate your advice on that today, Kevin. This yeah. was really really great stuff and i thank you very much and you'll we'll have some uh, things in the notes some links to sure. further information and thank you so much yeah man, no problem thank you for watching our show today i hope you found something useful if you have any questions about what you saw please do leave them in the comments below myself our guest or our community will do our best to get those answers for you if we don't know them ourselves we will go find someone who knows them if you loved us, please do hit the like button and the subscribe button. They make a bigger difference than you're thinking right now. And of course, go ahead and click on some of those videos YouTube is suggesting to you right now. We have a lot of stuff that we've worked hard on and are proud of and hope that you'll enjoy them too. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.